Today's video was going to be on ColorFab VariaShore TPU, but the sealed spool that I've had for two years actually held a roll of their lightweight PLA. Perhaps it knew that April Fools was just around the corner, but since we've only covered its similar yet slightly different cousin, Lightweight ASA, I decided why not dive into this filament. So in today's video, we will be covering Lightweight PLA. We'll go over the filament's properties, why you may want to use it, what is required to print with it, and of course, we will print with this filament. Although we're specifically using ColorFab's Lightweight PLA in this video, much of this will carry over to other active foaming Lightweight PLAs as well. So with all that being said, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Let's first touch on what ColorFab's Lightweight PLA is and what makes it so unique. At its core, this filament is based on ColorFab's PLA PHA filament, but contains a special active foaming agent that is affected by temperature. At traditional PLA temps of 200 to 210 Celsius, this filament behaves almost exactly like traditional PLA, with perhaps a bit more flex, almost like a PETG. When you increase the temperatures north of that, that's when the foaming properties activate, and ColorFab claims that, that the volume of this filament can expand up to three times. This unique property with a little bit of calibration will allow us to make some very unique lightweight parts. I did want to point out that this filament with the active foaming agent is quite different than something like Polymaker's pre-expanded lightweight PLA. If there is interest in me covering something like the pre-expanded lightweight PLA, let me know in the comments down below. So why would you want to print with a lightweight PLA? Well, there are lots of applications where having less weight and less density can be very handy. One application that immediately comes to mind is the world of RC. Being able to print out lightweight parts for things like boats or plane parts is an awesome use for this material. Similar to the example I gave in the lightweight ASA video, anyone that's printing out things like props or stuff for cosplay is definitely going to benefit from using something like a lightweight material. If you're going to be wearing a full printed armor suit all day long and you're able to shave off half weight, half of that weight or even more of that, well, that's going to be a much more comfortable experience. Additionally, you can get away with printing at much larger layer heights than you would typically be able to thanks to that expanding foam property. This can be useful for printing out parts quicker than you normally would if you're going to be finishing them or just for rough prototyping. Now let's look at the requirements for printing with this filament. I'm using the Voxelab D1, which is an i3 style printer with a direct drive extruder and an all metal hot end. Since this filament is based off of ColorFab's PLA PHA, it does not require an enclosure. The D1 has a powder coated PEI bed, which is my personal favorite solution for most filaments and lightweight PLA is no exception. Really, most build surfaces will work fine with this filament and the temperature I recommend is just the standard 60 Celsius for printing with PLA. For the extruder, there are no specific requirements, but as always, having a higher quality extruder is going to help make sure that you get more consistent results. Bowden or direct drive is going to be fine and based off of my previous experience using foaming materials, any stringing or blobs that happen are typically really easy to clean up after the fact. One unique aspect of this filament over a traditional PLA is that you will want an all metal hot end if you're trying to take full advantage of that foaming property. Standard PLA is typically printed anywhere from 200 ish Celsius up to maybe 220 Celsius, but to get the maximum foaming, in my case, the best temperature to print this at on this printer with this setup was 260 Celsius. As far as abrasiveness goes, this filament is not abrasive, so using the default brass nozzle that comes on just about any printer is going to be perfectly fine. Before you dive in, you will want to run a series of calibration prints to dial in the settings for your printer. ColorFab recommends printing a series of single walled cubes at various temperatures to measure the material's expansion. To do this, I downloaded the cube STL linked in their guide, removed all the bottom layers and ran it in vase mode. To expedite the process, I used Super Slicer's per model settings to increase the print temperature for each cube starting at 200 and 10 Celsius increments up to 280 Celsius. Since I was running vase mode, I also enabled complete individual objects so that an entire cube was printed and completed before the hot end raised temperature and started on the next cube. Speed wise, your mileage may vary, but for lightweight printing, ColorFab recommends not going above 40 millimeters per second. I did attempt to go above that, but ran into some issues with the filament not expanding quick enough, which led to under extrusion. So I would at least recommend starting there. And then if you want to after, you can try to scale from that and see what your results are like. It took roughly an hour for my nine cubes to complete. And then I measured the wall thickness of each of them with my digital calipers. The filament started expanding at temperatures as low as 210 C, 
with a 0.49 millimeter wall and capped at 260 Celsius with a 0.92 millimeter thick wall for an increase of 130%. Above 260 Celsius, the wall thickness began to decline, so I marked down 260C as being the best temp for this filament, at least on the Voxel Lab D1. Once you have the maximum expansion temperature, you'll want to run another series of squares with decreasing flow rates. This is at least true if you want to print with a more standard layer height and you're not going for extra large lines. The process for this is nearly the same as the first test. The only difference is that you'll set the filament temperature to the max expansion temperature, so 260 Celsius in my case, and the per model modifier will be the flow rate. I started at 100% flow and went down by 10% on each square. When complete, you want to measure the wall of each square, looking for the flow rate that returns your wall thickness to your nozzle size. 40 to 50% flow was the closest range for me, so I settled on 45%. This gave me a wall thickness of roughly 0.4 millimeters to match the nozzle on this printer. With that info, we now have the best temperature and the best flow rate for lightweight printing on our 3D printer, and all that's left is to actually do some printing. Ironically, when I went over to printables, there was a make it fly contest going on, which couldn't have been more perfect. I found an RC airplane and printed out a part of one of the wings in lightweight PLA, and then printed it with the exact same settings other than temperature and flow rate in Polymaker Polylite PLA. The result was a weight of 53 grams in lightweight PLA versus 114 grams in Polylite PLA, a reduction of roughly 53% in weight, which is quite substantial. Multiply that by the rest of the parts needed to build this plane and you are able to shave off a sizable amount of weight. The part also looks and feels great. The foaming agent gives it a slight bit of texture and if someone handed this part to me, I could easily believe that it was cut out of a block of foam. One thing that I feel is important to point out about this filament is how the foaming does affect its mechanical properties. ColorFab does have a TDS available, but it doesn't provide a ton of data. However, it does show a pretty significant decrease in tensile strength when we go from printing the material cooler with 100% flow versus foamed with a 45% flow. For the applications mentioned like RC or cosplay and props, this is probably not going to be an issue. However, if you're planning on using this for something that is a, a different functional use and it's going to be load bearing, that is something you'll definitely need to consider. And that has been lightweight PLA, a material that I've wanted to play around with for some time, but had no idea that now was going to be that time. At some point, I would love to print out a full RC plane in this material and actually take it out flying. Let me know what your thoughts are on this filament in the comments down below, if you've used it, and if you have any cool ideas for an application that this filament would be good for, I would also love to hear those. If you're interested in finding out more about this filament or picking up a roll for yourself, I will also have links available in the description down below. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel furthermore, I'll have links down below in the description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot. I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.